Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Davida Shinsky, and you're listening to Live Without Limits. Today's show is titled, 10 Reasons You Need a Digital Marketing Strategy in 2021. And the first thing that I'm going to do is tell you a little story, because this really actually shows you just how we have gone in the last 120 years, basically back to where we were at the beginning of the 20th century. Because if you remember, back when the Europeans first started leaving their home, their little small villages, and moving to the United States, what did they do? They actually brought with them their skills. When they lived in their small villages, they could go sell their wares from door to door. When they moved to the USA, they were in little small towns or communities, and as the, the little small communities grew into larger cities, then what they did was they started opening up or setting up push carts and street corners where the customers could come to, to them, and eventually they grew to where they had the little mom and pop stores. And their children, who were the first generation born in this country, were the ones that went to fight in both World War I and World War II. And right around the time of, or after the late, or into the 20s and 30s, you started seeing the growth of the corporations, where the idea was that you went to work for the corporation. You worked your way up to management, and after 25 years, you got that retirement with the 20 with the gold watch. And at that time, you had Social Security, and because you paid into it, you were supposed to live very comfortably. And I actually had a friend that I knew who, that her father worked for a trucking company, and that was how he 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 worked his way up into management. And then the the, the generation that came after World War II were known as the baby boomer generation, and many of them followed their parents into the corporate environment. And at that time, there was an unwritten rule that, that you had a job for life. Therefore, for many of the baby boomer generation, after they had been working for the corporation for 15, 20 years and they were nearing retirement, many of them, because corporations at that time were merging and had two to three people handling the same job, what they did was they offered their upper management and their middle management level position employees buyout packages. Since at that time there was an unwritten rule that you had a job for life. And many of them took those buyout packages and they went to work for smaller companies. All what they did was many of them started their own small business, and that was also the rise of the dot-com era. And that was the late 90s. And that was the beginning of technology. And the 80s was the the beginning of when you had Steve Jobs creating your personal computers. And that was also when the military started using the Internet as an, a way to communicate with each other. Then also that was the time of the crash of the, of the dot-com era, and it was also the time of the Y2K era when many people were afraid that their computers would crash because as we moved into a new century, 
that the technology or the software wouldn't work. And I had a friend who worked for IBM that took the buyout package and actually did try to, to, to do her own business and found out it was not for her. So what did she do then? She went to work as a manager for mailboxes, et cetera. And eventually, just before she retired, she went to work for Nordstrom. So, and then every generation after that that went to work for the corporations, they had no guaranteed job. They had no guarantee that they would even move up to into management level positions. Then, as the beginning of the 21st century happened, what did you see? You saw the growth of the Internet. You saw the growth of websites. Where, and let me tell you a little bit about my experience as a speaker and trainer. When I entered the workforce back in the late 70s and in the 80s, you didn't have the technology that you had today. And many professional speakers and trainers had to have media kits. And that meant that what they were doing was they had to have, pay someone to come and videotape them doing a presentation. And then they had to have one pages and brochures that they would mail out to associations and corporations and go before the seminar companies and actually audition to get hired in order to go out and travel for them and put on presentations. Now, this is what was going on at that time with it. If you went to work for these seminar companies, you would leave out on a Sunday and fly into the first city that you were going to be working because you had to be in the room setting it up at 7 o'clock in the morning so that when attendees started coming at 8.30, everything was set up with the back of the room sales and everything. And you really had to be able to know how to promote the products in the back of the room because the way you got paid was that you were guaranteed $250 a day. And then you got a percentage off of back of the room sales. Now, that may seem like a lot of money, but if you break it down to the fact that you were usually there from 7 in the morning to 5 o'clock in the evening doing a presentation, and then you had to break down the room and make sure that whatever didn't sell from the back of the room got shipped back to the company, then you would go then and only then would you go eat dinner, and then you got into your rental car and you traveled to the next city, and you did this five days a week, and then at the end of Friday evening, you flew home. And the, you, it was often said that you worked 10 days a month. Well, that seemed really great, and that seemed like really good money, but many of them often worked at least three weeks out of the month. So they were maybe home a week, and that travel really took a toll on family life. Well, today with the Internet, I can do the same thing and creating my own courses and putting them on various platforms. I can actually do, do training from home and do the same thing that I would be doing if I was with a, a, a seminar company. So the technology has changed how we do business, but it's given and made it more of an equal playing field for everyone. And the pandemic only accelerated a trend that was already happening at the beginning of the 21st century and was continuing to happen into 2020. But with the acceleration of it, you started seeing more people use Zoom. You started seeing more people do virtual rep presentations and whatever else. So. The most important of creating and using a digital marketing plan is to support for the digital transformation and company growth. I actually use the Builderall platform 
to, to market my business, and I've used various different platforms. I and I had someone create my website initially because I'm not a great website designer, because, and it was all DOS, and I didn't know what I was doing. But now you have built-in templates that you can pull in, and they make it so much easier to create your own because you can actually use the colors in your brand to brand yourself. Plus, you have other various tools because I can put all my e-learning courses on that platform. I can set up my webinars, and I can make them evergreen, and I have a booking tool. I have an autoresponder, and I don't have to pay for each of them separately. That's why I'm currently on the platform that I am today. Now, where do, you, where do you start if you want to develop a digital marketing strategy? It's still a common challenge since many businesses know how vital digital and mobile channels are today for acquiring and reach, retaining customers yet they don't have an integrated plan to grow and engage their audience effectively. If your business doesn't have a strategic marketing plan, you will suffer from 10 problems that I highlight later in this, in this show, and you will lose out to competitors who are more digitally savvy. So you need to have a plan to create a winning marketing strategy. Get started today using a tried and tested step-by-step process to optimize your marketing. What is digital marketing? Digital marketing specifically refers to achieving marketing objectives through acquiring digital technology and media. Digital technologies include company websites, mobile apps, social media company pages, search engines, advertising, email and automation, digital partnerships with other digital companies. However, to be truly successful, digital techniques must be integrated with traditional media such as print, TV, and direct mail as part of a multi-channel marketing communication. So just because you're using online marketing doesn't mean that you ignore the tried and true offline marketing systems. Our race planning framework splits up the customer's digital experience over reach, act, convert, and engage the full customer journey. Here's the thing, that offline marketing is just as important as online marketing because if you ignore one or the other, you're leaving money on the table. Every brick and mortar store today has to have an online presence. Although those that have an online presence don't always need to have a physical brick-and-mortar store because more and more people are doing business online because if you remember, even before the pandemic hit, before people started doing more buying and it became obvious that people were doing more buying online, every year around the holiday season, you would always hear about Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Now, Cyber Monday has become and, and grown far, far ex- extremely faster than it was even before the pandemic hit because every year the numbers were going up. Within each technique, there are lots of detailed tactics that are important to success. So they need to be evaluated and prioritized. For example, for dynamic content, for email automation, website personalization, to programmatic retargeting, and skyscraper content for organic search. Now, race, practical, digital, 
strategy learning path, part of the marketing strategy and planning toolkit. Learn how to create and implement an integrated omni-channel marketing plan, the challenges of digital marketing. In my experience, a common challenge is where to start drawing your digital marketing plan. I think there is a fear that a massive report is required, but we believe that lead planning works best. We plan it, and your plan doesn't need to be a huge report. A strategy can best be summarized in two to three sides of an A4 and a table linking digital marketing strategies to smart objectives within our race planning framework. Now, those happen to be uh, letters. Race is letters. Smart is letters. But both of them, smart refers to goal setting and how you set a goal and what you need to do with the goal. Digital marketing for beginners. Now, here's the thing about digital marketing, that you need a sales funnel where you can do an upsell and a downsell. But what you're doing is with, the, with a sales funnel, it's putting your customers through a process that you're going to give them something like an ebook or a white paper or whatever you want to just in exchange for getting their name and email address in order to start getting them into an autoresponder where you can start building that relationship with them. Then, as you go through the sales funnel, you can do an upsell, you can do a sales sell, you can even start using sales letters as a way of building and letting them know and, and giving them some really good information about who you are and your company and your business so that they get to know, like, and trust you. But what if you're one of the companies that don't have a digital strategy yet? Well, I think the two simple alternatives for creating a plan may suggest a way forward. Start with a separate digital marketing plan, defining transformation needed and making the case for investment changes. Then, following approval, create an integrated digital plan, which is part of the overall marketing plan. Digital is fully aligned and becomes part of business as usual. Use this digital benchmarking infographic to track your progress from social or from initial to optimize. So what are the takeaways to act on here? It seems to be that using digital marketing without a strategic approach is still commonplace. I'm, I'm sure many of the companies in this category are using digital media effectively, and they could certainly be getting great results from the search, email, or social media marketing. But I'm equally sure that many are missing opportunities for better tactics or better target, targeting our organization and are suffering from the other challenges that I've listed also. Perhaps the problems below are greatest for larger organizations who most urgently need governance. The majority of companies, our research, do take a strategic approach to digital from talking to companies. I find the creation of digital plans often occurs in two stages. First, a separate digital marketing plan is created. This is useful to get agreement and buying in by showing the opportunities and problems and map out 
a path through setting goals and specific strategies. But digital, including how you integrated digital marketing strategies, but digital, or rather, into your business activities. So let's go back and say that again. This is a useful to get an agreement and buy-in by showing the opportunities and problems and map out a path through, a, through setting goals and specific strategies, but digital, including how you integrate digital marketing into your business activities. Second, digital becomes integrated into marketing strategy. It's a core activity, business as usual, but it doesn't warrant separate planning except for the tactics. If you don't have a strategy, or maybe you want to review which business issues are important to include within a strategic review, we set the 10 most common problems that in our experience arise if you don't have a strategy. Basically what we're telling you is you have to have some type of strategy of how to market your business online. And the neat thing about my, the platform where I focus on put my, my website is that they actually train you in how to use all the tools. And they have a staff that they trainers that they call the Magnificent Five that will actually tell you how to put together selling products on a website or how to sell your services on a website and also how to, to literally build a strong e-commerce business. So those are some things that you need to consider if you're looking to grow a business online. So do you have a digital strategy? Since 2012, we have run an informal poll to see how widely used digital marketing strategies are. The results have shown that some big improvements over the years. A few years ago, we found around two-thirds to three-quarters did not have a digital marketing plan. Now, that number has shrunk to 45% in the latest survey. Although this is still quite high, it means almost half are still doing digital with no strategy in place. When we researched our managing digital marketing report, we were interested to see how this percentage looked for a defined sample. So, in this report, premium members can read our survey findings and recommendations based on how our 900 businesses use digital marketing today. And this is what we found in our survey about the level of adoption in the industry. So our latest research suggests an improved approach to planning and this sample of marketers with a fewer than half without digital strategy. So 10 reasons why you may need a digital channel strategy. And when we're talking about a digital channel, we mean you're using a website, you're using social media, you're using a sales funnel, and you're, at, you're, you're creating and, and putting on webinars that you can start building that no like and trust factor. You're also having a, a booking um, tool, and you're, you're using your emails to build those relationships. Your directness. I find that companies without a digital strategy, and many do, don't have a clear strategic goal of what they want to achieve online in terms of gaining new customers or building deeper relationships with existing ones. And if you don't have goals with smart digital marketing objectives, you likely don't put enough resources to reach the goals 
And you don't evaluate through analytics whether you're achieving those goals. You won't know your online audience or market share. Customer demand for online services may be underestimated if you haven't researched it. Perhaps, more importantly, you won't understand your online marketplace. The dynamics will be different from traditional channels with different types of customer profile and behavior, com competitors, propositions, and options for many communications. There are great tools available from the main digital platforms where you can find the level of customer demand. We recommend doing com competitor analysis and using Google's Keyword Planner. And what are those keywords? Well, those are actually the, the buzzwords that people key into or put into Google search or any other search engine to find out information. And tapping into the intent of searches to attract them to your site to see how many people interested in products or services or sector that you could reach through Facebook IQ. Existing and startup competitors will gain market share. If you're not devel devoting enough resources to digital, you're using an ad hoc approach with no clearly defined strategies, then your competitors will eat your digital lunch. You don't have a powerful online value proposition. A clearly defined digital value proposition tailored to your different target customer personas will help you differentiate your online service, encouraging existing and new customers to engage initially and stay loyal. Developers of a competitive content marketing strategy is key to this for many organizations since the content is what engages your audiences through different channels like search, social, email marketing, and on your blog. Those are actually looked at as different channels of marketing in your business. That's why it's so important to understand what digital marketing is. And here's the thing. You can actually outsource this work to someone that's an expert in the industry because if all of us have our strengths and our weaknesses, and the idea here is that you concentrate on the things that you do best because you can't wear all the hats and you can't do everything. And use a virtual assistant to help you with your online marketing strategy. And if not a virtual assistant, use a social media strategist or marketing strategist, someone that understands the industry and truly help you grow your business. And here's the thing, that if you look back at the jobs that were in the corporations today, many of those people do the same thing. For instance, a secretary is a virtual assistant. A graphic designer is also a website designer. To someone who has their own agency and can help you. And the neat thing about Builderall is that you can actually have your website with them and then be creating and having your clients as sub-accounts. And remember, you can go to my website, and that's the number one personalcareercoach.com, and you can sign up to get both individual and group coaching. 